Next question. New Jersey QSET, Quality Single Accountability System, is a mechanism by which school districts are evaluated. It is also the way Patterson can return to local control. In your opinion, what are the most important actions that the Patterson Board of Education can take to improve our QSAC evaluation? Let's begin with Ms. Barcenas. Well, um, essentially with uh, New Jersey QSAC, we've made great strides uh, recently, and my hat's off to the current commissioners and those before them that have put their great effort uh, towards this endeavor. Uh, essentially with the QSAC, uh, we've made great strides, uh, we've been hitting the marks where it's been in, in certain categories such as personnel, operations, governance, and the fiscal aspect of things. But our one um, category which we lag behind once again is our curriculum. So we definitely have to go back to basics and put more focus, uh, more rigor, but not only just rigor but accountability on top of that to go hand by hand, hand in hand um, and, and try to bring our test scores um, and our graduation rate a little higher and how we're going to do this is by focusing on early childhood education and carry through all these students into by the into the time that they go into high school until they graduate it is a fact that we are losing our students by grade level three and four so we definitely have to focus more attention into early child education more emphasis in these grade levels third grade and fourth grade because by the time they're reaching uh, ninth grade freshman year they're three to four years behind in their literacy program so again how do we obtain local control let's go back to basics let's focus on the academics on the curriculum again let's enforce that let's protect our early childhood education and make sure that we give all of our students the essential tools that they need in order to graduate go into higher education if they choose to or go to the career path that, of their choice. So we, essentially we've made great strides, great marks and other categories of the New Jersey QSAC but once again it goes back to the academics and that's where the focus is. Thank you. Ms. Kisman? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thanks to EduQSAC we are very close at this time to achieving local control but a curriculum and instruction is an area that is very problematic at this time because we achieved very, very low scores that are not adequate at all for our district or for any district entirely. Uh, at this time, what we feel we need, what I feel we need to do is we need to make sure we hold our teachers accountable. Our teachers need to be prepared. We need to have teachers that are ready and trained to fulfill the academic instructions that is uh, required for each and every classroom. We need to place more emphasis on early childhood education. Uh, as my colleague mentioned before, our children are currently reading three and four years behind grade level, which is affecting them in their in the progress every year because once they achieve high school years, once, they, once it's time for them to take their H HSPAs, uh, they are not at the level that they should be. So it's very hard for them to compete with other cities when it comes to the testing because they are not reading at the level that they should be. So curriculum and instruction is a focus that we need to make sure that we place 200% and make sure that our teachers are held accountable, our administration, and make sure that our curriculum is in order according to grade level. Each grade level should have its standards, make sure we are meeting them, and not just meeting them, but also excelling in each and every one of those areas to make sure that our students will have the adequate ed education that they deserve that would in thought help us move into local control. Thank you. Dr. Hodges? Um, there are five <laughs> parts to the, to the uh, QSAC uh, assessment. Curriculum instruction, fiscal, personnel, operations and governance. Of those five, the board can play the largest role in governance. During my last presidency, I put in place a, a, a committee, which subsequent um, presidents have, have um, retained, that strictly monitors the, gov the governance and the QSEC process for the district. What, what, that, what we're doing is we're making sure that we are compliant with all the rules and regulations that the state has required. We have monitored the documentation that they were looking for, and in, a, in addition to that, because it's a, it's a two-phased approach, we have made sure that we have um, asked them to check off that they have in, in fact seen the documents that we have prepared, so that there could be no, shall I say, misunderstandings about what was available and what we had produced. We want to make sure that we have done everything that we, that we that they're asking us to do 
even though in the past there have been some um, questionable assessments of our efforts in this district. So for, for the Board of Education, we had the largest impact on the governance portion of that, um, that assessment process. We exercise oversight over curriculum and instruction. We have very little control over personnel. In fact, we have no control over personnel. Fiscal and the operations, again, we primarily exercise the uh, oversight role. We, and, and those areas, we should be monitor very carefully. Thank you. If you could spend 15 minutes with Governor Christie, <laughs> What would you tell him about our state superintendent, Dr. Evans? Let's begin with Ms. Guzman. Our superintendent at this time is working very, very strongly and engaging very closely with the community, with the board members, and with the administration. Um, he is trying to move our district forward with uh, what we have because we need to work with what we have and what they are providing us now in the city of Patterson. He has uh, implemented the uh, strategic plan um, where he is focusing on increasing graduation rates, which is one of the very big issues that we have here in the city, increasing parental involvement, which we are lacking at this time in the city of Patterson. Um, I would let the governor know that we need more funding, we need more money. The superintendent needs more money to come to our district in order for him to be able to implement programs that are needed for our children and for their academic excellence. Um, I will let him know that it is of importance for him to come and sit down with our superintendent so he can see and have a tour and a guide of our facilities and at the, at the rate as that we're actually teaching our children. Our facilities are not adequate for our children, so he needs to come and sit with the superintendent so the superintendent can give him an evaluation and a walkthrough and actually visit these schools and visit these classrooms and see the overcrowding that we have in our classrooms the way that facilities are at this time, they are not adequate for our children's learning. Those are some of the things that I will let them know. Thank you, Ms. Guzman. Dr. Hodges? We have had five superintendents in the last seven years. And if you're a, if you're a, a superintendent, it is difficult to assess a school district, assess your personnel, determine what the needs of the community are, and then fashion the program to uh, address those needs in the amount of time that our superintendents have in this district been allowed to, um, to uh, have had available to them. If I were speaking to Governor Christie, I would make it very, very clear to him that instability at the head position makes it very difficult for us to move forward um, with any degree of success. We, he, the, the person there needs to know that they have their support since they're a state operated district in this short term and that there, he's not going to be interfered with and that he's going to be allowed to do what he needs to do. That's, that's number one. Number two, the budget. We are charged with providing a thorough and efficient education. The budgetary needs of this district are, are, um, are significant and they are not being served by the budget that's been offered by the state of New Jersey. I would ask him to understand, and there's a correlation between, we were, we were moving, we were having some significant success until we were flat funded and then we began to have these steady declines in, in, in the amount of funding as was, and you also will see the test scores that were, were rising and now are beginning to decline again. The, 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 the two graphs are very closely related. I would explain to him that those things are standing in the way of progress for the children of this school district. Lastly, the facilities. I would ask him to, to pay more attention to what the superintendent has to say about facilities. Thank you, Dr. Hodges. Ms. Barsness. If I had 15 minutes uh, with Governor Christie and I would speak to him about the superintendent, I would tell him first and foremost that our superintendent has made great strides here in the city of Patterson. He's uh, very progressive. He's been trying to engage our community a lot and he's made great, great efforts in that factor. Uh, he's also been very receptive. Um, a prime example of that is a lot of our teachers and a lot of the parents have been 
very vocal about the lack of the music and the arts department. And in actuality, in this upcoming uh, budget that's coming up, uh, the superintendent has taken that into consideration and is trying to um, allocate uh, more um, and bring in more of the music and the arts. So that's a prime example. And that's something that I would want to share that with the governor as well. Um, he's also uh, acclimated and assimilated a lot to our culture here in the city of Patterson. He's aware, culturally sensitive about all the issues that are here as well. And then I would also put the focus on the governor and let him know that we need the funds here. We are currently, um, there's overcrowding. Our facilities are not, some of them are not up to par. Only 8% of our students are in schools that are 30 years, uh, 30 years old and the rest of the students happen to be in older uh, facilities and establishments. So we need newer schools, more technology, more state of the arts, um, replenish us with better textbooks that are a little bit more culturally sensitive to the diversity that we have here in the city of Patterson. Um, and moreover, we're also, we need more money in order so we could renovate some of the schools uh, that, that, we, that we're lacking right now. Uh, specifically, $4 million of our, of our budget has been going into leasing some of the schools because we need more facilities. So once again, I will tell them of all the great strides that the, our superintendent has been doing, put the focus back on the governor, make sure that he comes and visits our, uh, the city of Patterson, and also tell him once again that our governor, uh, that our superintendent is has making great strides, but we need consistency as well. We need to make sure that um, in order for progress to continue, we need to make sure that he stays and that it's consistent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barson.